This is PC Stamp. Well, Graham Cole. The programme you're about to see is dedicated to the traffic police who risk their lives dealing with the sorts of incidents you're about to see. Our message is a simple one. Don't be a selfish or a reckless driver because it's other people's lives you're gambling with as well as your own. And one final point. Many of the incidents that you'll see, the drivers ended up being prosecuted. Well, let's see why. Take a look at these. This is the target vehicle. Keep your eye on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen for the speed that the vehicles are travelling. Well, we've got a time. We're going to be holding this vehicle if the uh, vehicle behind wants to uh, watch him. We've got them all on camera now. That's got a tow over. Police try at all costs to keep the target vehicle on the motorway by sealing off the slip roads. It's safer for the members of the public as there is more room for them to get out of the way. So here, the police car blocks the slip road to prevent the van from turning off. Not as easy as it looks, as you'll see later. Before the video car joined the chase, the thieves had thrown stolen TVs, videos, etc. out of the van to get rid of the evidence. But not all of it, as you'll see later. OK, I'm a video car, a traffic car, and behind this vehicle, we're now approaching junction 23. 23. We have one met car to the front. I'm immediately behind the bandit vehicle with an Essex and a Hertfordshire Panda behind that. They're refusing to stop. Two occupants, for your information. One mile to junction 23. Vascar 2 over. And they're what you just saw was a TV remote control unit. Take us uniform to If I can stay on your channel as we're coming into uh, your area, I'll be the link. Uh, Vascar Turbo. Yeah, MP Vascar 2, if you would please stay on this channel. Right, we're now on half a mile to Bignalls. Half a mile to Bignalls, one met car to the front. Bandit car between lanes two and three. The near side passenger is a big chap with a woolly hat on for your information. Hopefully the met car will try and block the off slip at Bignalls. We're now 200 metres to the off slip. At big doors. 200 metres, 100 metre. The Met car's now going to try and block big doors off for you. We're just blocking off. He looks like he's coming off. He's coming off. He's been forced on. He's been forced on uh, VH. He's now on the M25 B Bravo crossing the top of the A1. That's got two over. Yeah, we've got him on camera. Where are you, over? Yeah, MP 
Star 2, can you pass me how many cars are with you, please, over? Um, one Essex car, one Met. The other Met is obviously going around Big Loss with an attempt to uh, join up again. I've now got one Met Range Rover coming up behind me as well. Three total police vehicles, three vehicles. That's got two over. Yes, west uh, band M25, just going underneath the first bridge west of the junction. Amazingly, neither of them were injured in the crash. The passenger got sentenced to four years, while the driver got 27 months, of which three months were for dangerous driving. The M6 crash. Some facts and figures. Every year, over 4,200 people die on the roads in Great Britain. The cost of road accidents to this country is reckoned to be 5.5 billion every year. In human terms, the cost to those touched by the tragedy of a road death is incalculable. Road accidents are the major cause of death among young people in Britain. And one of the most common errors is driving too fast and too close to the vehicle in front. This is the M6 on a typical British day. It's just stopped raining, but spray from vehicles has reduced visibility. And 10 minutes later, the sun has come out, but the road is still wet. The vehicles are traveling too fast and too close together for the prevailing conditions. Keep your eye on the outside lane. The white van slows, the Peugeot stops alongside it, and the Red Cavalier takes, avoiding action. The vehicles immediately behind all slow to a halt. Some of them take evasive action by pulling onto the hard shoulder. But watch out for the white lorry in the middle lane. And now look at what's going on on the outside lane. Almost straight away, the motorway behind is completely blocked. If you're ever caught in this situation, don't block up the hard shoulder with your vehicle because the emergency services can't get through. Put it on the grass verge or leave it on the carriageway. Now let's run through that whole sequence again. Incredibly, the Red Cavalier didn't hit anything and was never traced. The vehicles immediately behind were able to stop, but the vehicles behind those weren't able to react in time and caused the pileup. No one was killed in this accident, but six people were injured, one seriously, 
and six drivers were prosecuted for driving without due care and attention, even though some of them had also been injured. But have a look at what's happening further back on the carriageway. An articulated lorry jackknifes into the central reservation. You can see it shaking as even more vehicles plough into it. The time from the Red Cavalier skidding to the last accident was a mere 35 seconds. See how the other carriageway has slowed to a crawl as people stop to have a look, or rather to rubberneck. In fact, rubbernecking is a dangerous occupation and causes even more accidents. We couldn't resist showing you this clip from Inverness. The unfortunate driver was caught by a gust of wind. He wasn't breaking the 50 mph speed limit for caravans or doing anything wrong, though the police do advise caravanners to avoid driving in windy conditions. Now watch this. The driver of the Mini was a nurse on her way to work. We found out subsequently that she was putting a music cassette in and lost control. This one wasn't a case of someone who wasn't concentrating and turned onto the motorway the wrong way. This is a stolen car with post office robbers inside going the wrong way down the A20 motorway in Kent. Once a police helicopter is on the target, it has little chance of getting away. The helicopter was arranging a roadblock before it became unnecessary. The unfortunate member of the public in the white car was just coming onto the motorway and didn't stand a chance. But luckily, all the occupants survived. The in-car videos are running all the time while on patrol. Now and again, they catch incidents like this. Luckily, the biker was okay, only bruised and shaken. This car is in the fast lane of the M25. They are trying to change the wheel. They thought they couldn't drive with a flat tire. Wrong, you can. Get onto the hard shoulder. Watch the two vehicles as they reverse illegally up the slip road to avoid a traffic jam on the motorway. The darker vehicle reverses round the white one on a fast bend, causing the oncoming car to brake sharply. The motorway patrol call this sort of driving suicidal impatience. This is the mystery man of the M25. He was never caught, but it seems likely that he was mentally unstable or drunk as he hangs around the side of the road. He'd created even more chaos crossing the first carriageway, but the cameras didn't catch it all. You can see the smoke caused by the lorry who had to slam on his brakes. The camera control noticed this person standing next to his car. Though they couldn't tell what he was doing, they could tell that the car had foreign number plates. The driver was in fact answering a call of nature. Just watch this sequence. Look out for the white box van entering the top of your picture. This highlights just how dangerous stopping illegally on a motorway can be and could cost him more than a penny. The same junction over 12 months later, the vehicle has overshot its turning and incompetently reverses back. We've speeded up this clip because it took the driver an unbelievably long time to back up. Watch the driver of the black car who leaves it to the last minute before cutting off the motorway and narrowly misses causing a nasty accident. As far as we could tell, this driver has no reason to stop here. He could and should have stopped on the hard shoulder. Another driver who missed their turning and decides to break the law and risk both their own safety and that of many other road users by reversing back. From the way that the car weaves around, it's clear that this driver obviously needs to improve their reversing but this is not the place to do it.
Only evasive action by the coach driver avoids a major incident. You never know what you're going to find on the road. How about this recovery vehicle who's been called out to help someone in trouble, but ends up causing trouble himself? You don't expect motorway service vehicles to turn around in heavy traffic like this with such disregard for other motorway users. But then you've got to be ready for the unexpected to happen at any moment. Like in this next clip. The Norfolk Caravan Chase. This isn't a lost holidaymaker. It's someone who wanted a caravan to live in, so help themselves to one. Got heavy braking. That's right. No, straight on into the field. Straight on into the field. Yeah, we're on the field in pursuit. Uh, that's a stubble field. Uh, we got to watch now. We're probably going to get a ram if uh, if we don't watch out. Yeah, we're on the stubble field. Uh, we're losing. He's got his door undone now. I think. No. Yeah, we can't see anything at the present time. We've got to be careful of our vehicle. Yeah, there's two up in their car, two up in their car. Watch for the rabbits and birds fleeing for their lives in the police car headlights. There's still a cell that can tell from your one zero in pursuit. Yeah, we're in the middle of the field, middle of the field. He's now got the caravan sideways. Now he's still going away from us. Yeah, right. We're just worried about him ramming us. Uh, we've now got a gateway coming up. He's making for it. The driver made a run for it, but the police caught his passenger. Yeah, they're out, they're out. They're running, they're running. Tailgating. To keep a safe gap between you and the vehicle in front, you need to obey the two-second rule. What you need to do is to wait for the vehicle in front of you to pass a fixed point, a sign or a bridge, for example. Then say aloud, only a fool breaks the two-second rule. If you've passed the same point before finishing the saying, then you're driving too close. Like these vehicles, and that's an endorsable offence. The lorry is being driven with lack of due care and attention which carries a heavy fine and a three to five point endorsement. These two vehicles are being driven by friends. When the judge in Cheshire saw this clip, he took their licenses away. It's not advisable to tow on a motorway and never at this speed. Don't overtake other vehicles while towing. This driver claimed he'd forgotten he had someone on tow. Sunbury on Thames Chase. The occupants of the car had just carried out a burglary in Salisbury. The video car noticed them and they panicked. You? I've got a feeling about this one of you. The driver was caught after a short foot chase. He was found guilty of burglary and was sentenced to 100 hours community work. Bikes. This rider 
was on his way back from a race meeting at Donington. He might have thought that he was on the racetrack, but he was actually on the M1. While undertaking may be permissible on the track, on the M1 it definitely is not. It's excess 120 miles an hour inside overtaking her. The radio message is all you need to know about the trouble this rider is in. Still 130 southbound, coming to the mile board for junction 20. Uh, have you had any response from North Hands yet? I know. Uh, Whether you're in a car or on a bike, anyone caught exceeding 100 miles an hour runs a very real chance of losing their licence straight away. The magistrate can also instruct the offender to retake a driving test before being allowed back onto the road. Even worse, a driver with that kind of record on their driving licence can find it very difficult indeed to get insurance. This motorcyclist was videoed riding at almost 80 mph down the docks road in Liverpool. The road looks quiet but it has a 30 mph limit and that's a maximum. The statistics are this. If you hit a pedestrian at 20 mph, only one in 20 is killed. At 30 mph, nearly half are killed, and at 40 mph, nearly all are killed. Catch up with your mate and tell him as well. Catch up with the upper, tell him as well. Catch up with him and tell him. Notice how the police pull the two bikers at the same time. Here, the police video car has clocked this biker exceeding the speed limit. They follow him as he comes off the Westway in London. What the police didn't know at the time was that the bike was stolen. It was never seen again. Trouble on two wheels doesn't just come from motorcyclists. Here, a joyrider, out on his pedal bike, gets found with dry feet, riding along the hard shoulder of the motorway.
having you. They both ran off after falling off the bike but were quickly caught. The passenger claimed that he didn't know the bike was stolen until the police tried to stop them. The driver has since skipped bail and is on the run. Road Madness. This driver should have stopped straight away and got someone to help. Instead, he tries to drive back to the garage, endangering everyone behind him. Jesus. With today's tightened emission controls, more and more cars are falling foul of the law. If your vehicle smokes, please get it fixed. Road signals and white lines. How can you fail to see them? This lot did. Like the junction? Or the car on the inside lane? Or the keep left sign? Corporation Street. What the hell is she going? She's going the wrong way round the roundabout. Uh, she's cut the... Uh, put the klaxons on, I think. As you can see, the roundabout is there. There's a keep left sign, and she's diving through here. There's traffic trying to get through there, so there is a problem. Or the pedestrian, halfway across the zebra crossing. This Liverpool taxi driver seems to think that the white line is a place to dump rubbish. I bet you've never seen a traffic car nabbing a little out before. A greater hazard is rubbish falling from this skip lorry. The offence here is having an insecure load. The rubbish should have been covered with a tarpaulin to prevent it from falling all over the road. If that rubbish had fallen in front of this driver, he wouldn't have seen it. He's too busy reading his map to notice anything, not even the camera car. It cost him £140 and four points on his driving licence. This might be a good way of avoiding a traffic jam, but also of getting into trouble. It's just as well that no one came out of their front gate at that moment. The MR2 chase. This is a stolen MR2, which is the getaway car for a guy from Moss Side. He's on the run after the armed robbery of a post office near Chester. Yeah, 
Hey, uh, back on the right. Oh, he's hit by the right. He's back on the space. He's going to go out. He's going to be continuing past him. He's going to be going out. 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 Unmarked blue police rover is now in contact with him. Yes, we have to do He's now taking the line, he's got a traffic, he's just passing a marked range over. He's now approaching the one mile mark for Clifton, the one mile mark for Clifton. What is it? What is it? He's going to be taken out before he gets to the line. He's going to be taken out before he gets to the line. He's going to be taken out before he gets to the line. He's going to be taken out before he gets to the line. Yet again, wrong. He's in traffic. 
The person that the MR2 crashed into was slightly injured, while the MR2 driver was sent down for eight years with a recommendation he serves at least five, followed with a four-year driving ban and retest. Overtaking and speeding. Not only is this driver on the M1 undertaking at almost 70 miles an hour, he's paying so little attention that he doesn't notice that he's being caught by a video car. This madman in Hampshire, who nearly collided with two cars, got fined £400 for dangerous driving and gained four points on his licence. And this character was fined £400 and was lucky not to kill someone. Today's cars have been so developed that it's easy to exceed speeds of 100 mph in what's little more than a family saloon. The only thing that hasn't improved over the last 70 years is the standard of driving. Watch the speed counter in the bottom right of your screen. He lost his license. The off-road chase. Got left, left, left into a field. Driving across the field. A large copse of trees at the other side of the field. Dog and traffic car behind. All the traffic cars, he can follow this track round and come back out onto the uh, back road through Englefield Estate. On four, do you receive that, over? Yeah, on single crew, this is a bit difficult, over. At the, uh, it's through the gate, and he's continuing down the back road, back towards the A4, and the road that he came up from on the A4. along this road back towards the A4. Vehicle slowing, he's driven into a field on the offside, driving through a field. He may reach up on the traffic unit directly under the helicopter now. He leads up to the private airstrip. Still continuing through the crop. The car continues along the uh, gravel track. He can come right up to the airfield area. Vehicles uh, still in the field. Pure information uh, map reference is approximately 613694. Map reference 613694 all units. Still driving round and round in this field of crops. Coming up to a hedge. Straight through the hedge as the traffic car stops on the road under the helicopter. Still flowing through the field of crops. This is up towards Beenham House area. Yeah, the windscreen has gone on the Range Rover. Still in the field of rock, towards a ditch and hedge. He's into the ditch and hedge. The vehicle has come to a standstill by the farm under the helicopter. Passenger door open, one male, black t-shirt out, wearing a white coat. Both running behind the farm. Yeah, the farm. They're climbing up. It's what for a one one. We're on the track. Uh, Lead to the farm for your information, over. From 
597. They're walking slowly towards us with hands in the air. They cross the concrete yard. Roger, X-ray down to 61. This, from the Thames Valley Police, is a classic example of how car thieves don't get away once the helicopter has latched onto them, wherever they drive or run to. Car phones. Just because he drives a Bentley doesn't mean he owns the road. His erratic lane changing came down to the fact that he was using his car phone while on the move. For this, and the speeding ticket, the driver collected a £200 fine and a four-point endorsement. He was still on the phone when he was pulled up, probably calling his lawyer. The traffic car noticed this driver on the A2 at Blackheath. Yeah, He's still on, just yeah, take, okay. take, take him up the A2. I've got it on. <laughs> oh yes, well that's good enough evidence, that's good enough evidence. That's without due care. care. Find £200 for careless driving and four penalty points. Bad lane changing. Statistically, less accidents occur on motorways per mile than on any other type of carriageway in this country. You wouldn't think so, though, to look at some of these instances. Ninety-five percent of all road accidents are caused by driver error or driver carelessness. This gentleman, having seen one car flash past at 100 mph, thought he would be bloody minded and obstruct the next vehicle doing 100 mph. But in fact, this stupid act got him a £40 fine for dangerous driving and a three-point endorsement. The unmarked traffic car still caught up with the car doing 100 mph. We're in a 30 mile an hour speed limit, show them way. Finally, a clip from Liverpool of someone speeding and driving dangerously. Listen to the in-car talk. Charlie, a Foxtrot, 
The vehicle is a black Austin Metro. It's travelling towards Bushy Heath, Stanmore Hill. Two occupants, male IC1s. It looks like they're trying to drop a dog out the near side door. Over. So it's one of those um, things that bite you. It's one of those yeah, ones that bite you. Yeah, it's a bull terrier. Chasing, watch the door, watch the door. Still chasing the vehicle northbound towards Bushy Heath, Stanmore Hill, Alpha 991, Bravo, Charlie Foxtrot. 991, Mount Elliot, North Hopper, Respeed, and Yalfina, Central. Take five, Charlie. Come back, five, Respeed. That's a pit bull. That's a pit bull. Still travelling towards Bushy Heath, past the junction with Wood Lane, refusing to stop. The passenger near side door is open. Still travelling towards Bushy, speed 50 miles an hour plus. Coming into the 40 mile an hour limits, still Stanmore Heath, up towards Bushy, speed 62 and uh, getting faster. Please 
Richie. Bonnet Lane. Bonnet Lane, the third. Head towards the A1, he should be passing Beaconsville Road very shortly on our left hand side. He's doing some diabolical overtakes. They caught one guy in the field. When the case came to court, he changed his story and claimed his brother was the driver. His brother had just started an eight-year stretch. He was fined for possession of cocaine. No one knows what happened to the dog or the stuff chucked out of the car. I thought you might like to see how a lot of those clips were videoed. Let me introduce you to the Metropolitan Police video car. Time and distance unit, LCD monitor, and of course, the camera. In the boot, there's a video recorder on continuously and a second monitor in the back here. So the police can invite you into the back where they can show you exactly what you were doing. Remember, the roads are a dangerous place and a car a lethal weapon. Treat them with respect. <laughs> 